So today what I want to do is a, a three-minute tech. Uh, and that's what we're going to start with is Bcash FS. So we're going to talk a little bit about that quickly. So start the timer and let's see if we can stay within three minutes. Have you ever pondered the cutting edge advancements in Linux file systems? If so, you're in the right place. Today we're diving into the world of Bcash FS. This is the brainchild of Kent Street Matter, uh, who was a formal Google employee that has, has taken a modern file system and built it for Linux using as the foundation Bcash. Bcache is short for block cache. That's a, a Linux kernel block layer cache. It allows for one or more fast disk drives, such as flash-based solid-state drives, to act as a cache for one or more slower hard disk drives, like spinning Rust drives. But wait, what if we could use Bcache as a full-fledged file system? Meet Bcache FS. Bcache FS is a next-generation, robust, performance-centric Linux file system. It has its roots in Bcache, which elevates it from a caching layer to a full-fledged file system. This transition has led to Bcache FS being touted as a real competitor to other popular Linux file systems like ButterFS and ZFS. It also is, is aiming at replacement for EXT4 and XFS. So what sets Bcache FS apart? Bcache FS offers a plethora of features like checksumming, compression, encryption, snapshotting, and multiple device support. There's a lot of other features in this as well. It also boasts of copy on write, which means that data is not directly overwritten, lending an extra layer of data integrity. Bcache FS also promises speed and offering performance that rivals even the fastest of EXT or XFS files. Now you might be wondering, how do I get Bcache FS on my system? To install Bcache FS, you'll need a Linux kernel capable of supporting it. One such kernel is version 6.7. The installation involves a few simple steps. First, clone the Bcache FS tools from the official repository using the get clone command. Once it's cloned, compile those tools using the Linux make. Next, clone the Bcache kernel get tree and compile it if your kernel doesn't have support for Bcache FS already. So with the kernel and the tools ready, you're now able to create your first Bcache FS file system using the make Bcache command. Once your Bcache FS file system is all set, you can then add a cache disk if you want by using the make bcache command to format your SSD that you're going to be using as a cache and then attaching it to your existing bcache file system using the bcache fs command. Additionally, bcache fs supports RAID 0, 1, and 10, which basically is a software construct, and then RAID 5 and 6 setups as well. As I said, they call them replicas. You can configure these RAID levels using bcache fs commands to do that. So to recap, we've journeyed through the world of Bcache FS, exploring the roots in Bcache and its evolution into a full-fledged Linux file system. We also compared it with popular file systems like ButterFS and ZFS, weighing its advantages. We've walked you through the process of installing Bcache FS, creating a Bcache FS file system, installing a cache disk, and configuring RAID setups as well. So Bcache FS is a testament to the constant evolution and improvement in the Linux file systems. Offering you a robust performance-centric solution, it's a reflection of the endless possibility that Linux continues to offer us as users. So the next time you're pondering over a Linux file system, remember Bcache FS. It's a modern file system built on the foundations of Bcache. So stop the timer. <laughs> Stop the timer. We'll see if we got to, if did I go over. I want to talk a little bit about my experiences with Bcache FS and leave you with that today. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. That You can do replication. You can do caching. You can do compression and encryption. You can do snapshots. They're working on a, I don't, it might be done, but they're working on a no cow mode. That's necessary for certain types of applications, particularly database applications where they, you, it's not desirable to be doing, yeah, you, you, especially in, a, in something that's transaction oriented. They already do that. I mean, there's a log in databases that already does that. So, yeah, so there's no need to have a copy of the data before you write the new. Uh, there's also a ref link 
uh, that they're working on. There's ex extended attribute support, such as your ACLs and also any quotas that you want to apply to the file system. It's scalable. They have so far tested it up to 100 plus terabytes, which is probably fine for most. That's probably way more than you need for most home systems and home labs, but it's not enough for a modern enterprise. But I don't think it's really aimed at that right now. So it, it does offer high performance and low tail latencies. And the one thing that they're still working on is erasure encoding. Now, erasure encoding is just an algorithm to determine if it gives you some redundancy checking to make sure that the data that you have written is the same as it was when it was originally written. So it's a mechanism to determine you know, if you have bit rot or you have corruption in the file system for some reason. Usually, uh, bit rot is something that occurs over time with rust uh, devices. I suppose it could also happen with SSDs as they get older and parts of the of the uh, crystalline substrate begins to fail. And that, that does happen, but usually most people replace their drives long before those kinds of things happen. Now, hard drives, of course, are unpredictable in the way they fail. All it takes is for that head to touch the platter <laughs> and that's it. You're done. <laughs> You're done. My experiences with it have been so far, I've run into a couple of bugs. I tested this under um, Ubuntu's 2310. I installed the mainline 6.7 kernel from Canonical. You can get pre-compiled uh, kernels from the mainline repository. So I ran into some issues with that mainline kernel. First was after I created a bcache file system, I was able to mount it. I was able to, to do a little testing with it and see how fast it was. So I was able to do some performance analysis with it. And then it, I rebooted my system uh, and uh, for the night and then came up the next morning. And the bcache file system gave me an error when I attempted to mount it. It said that the, uh, the super block was, was, did not match any version that the bcache FS driver had understood. Now, I didn't, I didn't do an update on the kernel. I didn't do an update on the tools, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I recreated the file system again. I was able to mount it, was able to use it, no problem at all. But I tried the re I, I just went ahead and tried the reboot again to see if maybe it was something weird. This time I looked at the error messages. And I didn't see any coming up. But then I'm not trying to mount it at boot time. So uh, I just did a manual mount and, again, got the exact same problem. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, it could be something I'm doing wrong. Uh, that's always a possibility with something new and you're trying to figure it out for the first time. The second thing is, is that I did not see the kind of performance out of it that I would expect to see uh, based on their comments from the, who they're competing with. Uh, it does well in reads, uh, but it doesn't do well in writes. So um, that's just my, my look at it. Now, I'm not getting ready to publish my results yet. I don't want to do that until I have a full understanding of the file system uh, because, you know, I can make mistakes just like anybody else. So I want to make sure that I understand it fully and have a grasp and a clue on how to use it properly. So look for that coming in a future video. So that's all I had for today. Uh, please like and subscribe and share this video out with your friends. Hope to see you all again real soon and bye for now.